so this session will be focused on uh, UART. Uh, UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. So let's learn the perspective why we are uh, let's understand the perspective why we are learning this UART protocol. Till now, we have learned some protocols like APB protocol, uh, um, memory implementation, these aspects. But the real chip is about data transfers. In anything you do, any any operation you talk, you think of in a chip is about data transfers. Example, talking over phone. There is a data moving from your audio system, from audio, audio system to, to modern and it gets transmitted. Essentially, everything you do in a, everything you do in electronic device is about data transfers only. For that matter, let's say sending an SMS is also a data transfers. Even playing a game is about data transfers. Typically, when we say data transfer, what is data transfer? There is one component which is giving data. Other component which is consuming data. For example, in playing a game, example of playing a game, the data is present in DDR, GPU subsystem, the one which uh, processes the data is consuming the data. So the data is going from DDR to GPU and GPU is processing the data. In that case, the data transfer is happening from DDR to GPU. So for data transfers to happen, for data transfer to happen, it requires a protocol using which this happens example what is mean by protocol like you already know i mean probably the you are already familiar with app protocol see app also has some rules based on which data based on which transaction happens between master and slave how does it happen i mean in terms of how handshaking happens how address will be driven, how data will be driven. All those aspects are based on some rules. Based on some rules, these transactions happen between the master and slave. Similar to APB, there are many protocols. Similar to APB, there are many protocols which are used in the chip for data transfers. These protocols are majorly divided into two categories. One is on-chip protocols, one is Peripheral communication protocols. On chip protocols are for the communication on the chip. Communication means what? Data transfer for the components on the chip. Peripheral communication protocols are the communication are same thing, data transfer for the components 
with the components rather i will say with the components outside the chip that is why it's called as peripheral communication protocol okay the most important thing about peripheral communication protocol is these protocols needs to be implemented in as many as less number of ports as possible as minimal minimal number of ports as possible it means to say if i take you out if i take usb usb is an example pca express is an example spa is an example i square c is an example you is an example ufs is an example there are many such protocols which are based on which are which fall under the category of peripheral communication protocol. in on chip the protocols like axi ahb apb wishbone these all protocols come under on chip communication protocols in peripheral communication usb pci express spi i2c this kind of communication protocol we want these protocols to use minimal number of ports imagine how many ports does usb has USB uses four ports, voltage, ground, D plus and D minus. So the primary requirement that drives peripheral protocols is peripheral protocols is minimal uh, minimal number of ports that is where you see usb has four ports going forward you'll realize that spi has four ports uh, i i square c has only two ports uart will have only two ports so on every peripheral protocol will have less number of ports why why less number of ports are required imagine a laptop it has got one usb port there are four pins here instead of four pins imagine 40 pins what will happen the usb port will take one complete side of the laptop you need a usb which will be almost as big as one side of the laptop i don't want such a big usb ports because of that they intentionally keep this lower it also helps reduce the cost it also it reduces the size the port size it also it reduces the the port cost implementation of the port So today, in today's session, we are going to talk about UART protocol. As I said, UART, UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter. It is called as universal. Why it's called as universal? Let's understand. If I take a remote control, just an example of one possible example of UART protocol, a TV remote. What do you do in TV remote typically? Change the channels, change the mode, uh, increase the change the volume.
okay? change the volume the many things you can do basically when i press the remote when we press remote that information should go to go to television simple right we can use for the actually this communication so you can imagine your remote and tv here basically our intention is to convey this information from here to here so when that information comes here there will be a receiver which which will decide whether to increase the volume whether to change the channel whether to switch on or switch off the tv everything will be decided based on what is coming in. our idea is basically to transfer this data from here to here it is this tv circuit which will decide what to do with that so here we need a protocol one of the easiest way of implementation this is this can be implemented using UART protocol. so how does it do that this is how it will work so this is my remote this is my television tv rather let's say right it wants to transfer some data from here to here so what are the two ways one is wired connection one is wireless connection in this case we will go for wireless what it is going to do is my remote will have one part of the remote will have something called as uart transmitter it will have uart transmitter on the television side i'll have you are one more UART logic which will act like a receiver. It will act like a receiver. This will act like a transmitter. TX means transmitter, RX means receiver. Whatever now, whatever operations I want to do, I can map them. Let's say uh, I'm changing the channels or specifically choose a channel. Specifically choose a channel. Anything can be done through pressing the remote buttons what tv remote does is tv remote all these operations are mapped to specific values that means let's say changing the channel means increase volume means a tick to b one uh, one zero one zero 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 let's say decrease volume means let's say one let's say change the mode means one zero so on we'll have such kind of mapping where each operation is mapped to specific binary pattern each operation is mapped to specific binary pattern so when i increase the volume in my remote you may you take your remote in your hand now let's say you increase the volume what is that should happen that this 8d 8 bit number should go from here to television from here to television so you are he acts like a medium see you are is the medium through which this 8 bit transfer happens from transmitter to receiver now what is the primary motive here what is the primary motive in this case we want less cost we want low power consumption We are okay with low performance. But these two are the primary requirements. You understand, right? Because if I take a simple example, a ATEL digital TV is there. The remote costs 150 rupees or 100 rupees only. Imagine same thing at 1000 rupees 
what will happen people will be will not buy the remote in that case because even if it spoils they'll try to use the spoil remote only because spending thousand for remote control will be will be costly so idea is basically whoever is manufacturing remote they want to keep it lower cost low power consumption it should not be like when i whenever i keep the remote in hand it should be hot right we are okay with low performance because we are not going to use the remote every minute and every second right so that amount of data transfer you do is very less actually amount of data transfer we do is very less in TV remote so our idea is to basically keep low cost low performance and low power, low power low power consumption low performance one of the ways to achieve this is uart protocol so one of the medium through which you can do that is through uart protocol so what uart does is uart creates this setup where i am going to give that 8 bit data whatever i am i want to transmit i am going to give from my remote hardware to uart actually from a remote from a user perspective this whole thing is what we are calling as remote this whole thing is what we are calling as the remote but ideally speaking this is the remote which generates the logic this is the one which transmits that logic so on the other side television this is whole thing is what we are calling as television this is the receiving logic this is the actual television so how does this communication happen let's understand so this is going to give 8 bits to the transmitter now the transmitter sends the data in this format see this is the 8 bits that i want to send you understand this is the 8 bits i want to send from here to here and uh, please uh, actually in fact among eight bits seven are the actual character bits one is a parity bit uh, one is start bit one is two are stop bits please understand this format once in fact it is not going to be eight bits of data in fact it's going to be seven bits of data so we will instead of using Increasing volume 8 bits will use 7 bits. 7, 7. So let's remove one of these. So, medium through which this 7 bit transfer happens from transmitter to receiver. So, if I have to give increased volume, let's say if I have to keep the press the remote for increasing the volume, what I will do is what is the data? 1, 1. No, okay not actually this was correct only one zero one zero one zero one zero 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 so i will be typing one zero one if this will come down here one then zero 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 uh, typically what is parity is uh it, it is done to maintain an odd parity i mean you decide whether you want odd parity or even parity the it will be done in such a way that all these bits together including parity bit result in a odd parity see one one is there two three ones four ones five ones since five ones are there you don't need to add any one here if there were if this was low instead of high it was low then we would have added here to maintain an odd parity you need to add one one more one here that would have made it odd parity I will explain what is the significance of parity. If at all something goes wrong, any bit uh, toggles instead of by mistake, when I'm receiving this here, if I receive it, this data as like this, sorry, like this, then this parity bit can be used to figure out that there is something wrong happened in this whole pattern. Let me explain what is parity concept is. See, parity. 